For the beam-calling joint, uh, we can perform different analyses. If we solve with elastic, elastic linear behavior, we will have this straight line with elastic uh, linear behavior. We did it, and then we check by code. We check by code, take it into account non-linear behavior, and we see if we needed more reinforcement or not. Uh, other way to, to, to perform a non-linear behavior of this building is uh, modeling uh, this uh, a bending moment curvature behavior of, of beams here with a nonlinear springs on these connections. With those behaviors, if we are solving with uh, first order results, we will have this polyline. On every of these points is when the bending moment goes over the limit of the of this uh, of this union, and uh, we will have a pin connection. So, performing that type of analysis, we can get this type of uh, pushover uh, result. Instead of solving with that, if we have uh, taken into account second order effects, then we will have this other behavior here on bottom. And if we use, uh, as we are doing in our case, uh, distributed plasticity in all the, the, the beams, we will have a more conservative result, more realistic result, that is the bottom line. So that is what we've done uh, for using solid elements for, con for concrete and uh, trusses for, for bars. I'm performing this uh, nonlinear uh, analysis to, to obtain the ductility and the uh, possible collapse of the structure. If we see the model, here, uh, if I can load, Well, this is the reinforcement. We have different bars, straight bars, and uh, with uh, street ropes in the two directions, one for the beams that goes inside the, the column, and well, this is the configuration. In this, uh, I didn't add any special uh, reinforcement for seismic behavior, but well, uh, we could improve uh, it if we need to, <clears throat> to get a better a ductile behavior of this uh, union. Also, the concrete here is modeled with solid elements. Here you can see uh, the mess uh, doesn't match, the node uh, don't match between one part and the other. What we did is three different independent volumes and we uh, use contact elements for gluing them. The contact elements here we have it's very easy to create contact elements here in messing you create contact elements and then just let one clicking and then the other clicking you have it click here and then you define that this contact should be glue so the behavior is completely glue there also here you can see the uh, the beam the the reinforcement, the reinforcement bar. bars uh, uh, also, the, the mesh uh, doesn't match with the, uh, the solid elements. Uh, it's not a problem because we have an option here that is, that is insertion. In the insertion, we select the host element, that is this, and then we select the, uh, the bar that we are inserted in the concrete. Clicking here, then the behavior will be completely uh, together as if they are saying nodes. So in this way, it's very easy to generate these models, generating volumes, insert reinforcement. It's very fast also using those loops to create reinforcement bars and these uh, loops with the, uh, for the, with the Python, Python commands and solve the model. And well, what, we, what we've done is also uh, apply symmetry boundary conditions on, bo on both sides and uh, vertical pressure uh, equivalent to the axial force we have in the different parts of the model and then apply lateral loads, cycling loads. These loads here we have applied different uh, one, two, three, four. What we are doing is apply some loads here we can see. Here we, have, we apply first some, some loads uh, one direction, then in the other direction, and so on. So we are applying different cycling loads. 
to get this behavior of this union. We could also perform a pushover analysis, just horizontal load until the model uh, doesn't convert, it means collapse of the structure and get the capacity curve. But with these uh, cycling loads, they are smaller than that pushover analysis these cycling loads, I will have a progressive damage of the structure and the behavior will be much closer to the real behavior of the of this joint and their uh, seismic load that are, are cyclic loads. So here I'm going to uh, load the first the first cycle, which has uh, 50 loads, load steps, and I'm going to plot displacement versus force. In the bottom node, that is node 57. Okay, and we can see we have a parabolic behavior uh, on this model. Then I apply, uh, I remove the load, we'll have the other behavior and apply the opposite load. Let's see some results at, at, the, at the end of the first, the first uh, side. Here, well, we have here the deformed shape with these lateral loads. Well, I'm going to remove the, the loads. And well, here we can see I applied a load in this direction and I had it. Let's see first concrete, concrete cracking. Set component of concrete cracking. It will be concrete cracking here on, on the column. Well, if I plot without average, I can see here I have different cracking lines. I plot average also, and well, I can see I have here mainly cracking. This is the cracking strain, that is this value in the, here in the explanation of the model. That value is, uh, well, the strain we get following this line until cracking and this softening uh, behavior. So it's in some point here. Also other way to, to see the real uh, crack strain here, the crack width is taking into account the strain on reinforcement. There's a relationship between stress strain on reinforcement and crack width. So we can also analyze the crack width we are having. Well, also let's see in the other direction, instead of in X direction, the crack width. Here we can see we are having also cracking here and here due to this, uh, this bending. Well, also we can plot crossing. The way to plot it is uh, equivalent a stick strain. Here we can see we are having compression uh, failure in this part or CR failure as well because the equivalent plastic strain is playing CR, CR or compression failure. Well, let's see now the reinforcement. I'm going to hide the solid part. And this is the reinforcement. So let's let's plot equivalent plastic and strain as well. And here I can see I have yielding problems in these bars. Well, after applying uh, those cyclings, loading and loading, loading and loading, here we can see the results if we put them all together. Here we have the results, uh, the, the model stop converging after cycle number five. Here we are plotting forces and displacement. Displacement in millimeters, forces in, in megapascals applied in the bottom. So we can see the first cycle is more uh, from lighter to dark. Here we can see the first cycle loading and unloading loading with progressive damage, loading, and well the first one is more parabolic, is due to concrete failure, and the last one is more uh, yielding of the uh, 
of the reinforcement because most of the concrete has a big damage. So well, uh, it's more straight and bilinear, and the first one is parabolic. We can see here the last, the 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 last uh, unloading, loading in the other direction, and unloading. The, it makes this behavior until it breaks down. Well, uh, we could use uh, as pushover analysis result, or uh, for those springs to model the union, we could use. Uh, we could use the envelope of the maximum values. So if we use the envelope of the maximum values, this is the dark line. That goes, uh, is the envelope of maximum values. And it could be used as pushover. If we combine, if, if we compare this line with the, uh, the envelope, here we have the pushover with the envelope, the pushover goes higher. The difference between one and the other is the damage, uh, the damage that was generated due to these cycling loads, which is smaller, so it's more conservative. 